So without further ado, I'll turn over keys to a successful transition to smart reporting over to Ruhol Vedic. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Welcome everyone to another exciting Connect with Remedy webinar. Today's focus is smart reporting and we will share how to transition to smart reporting. My name is Rahul Vedak and I'm product manager at BMC with focus on smart reporting, analytics, Remedy platform and Remedy single sign-on. Joining me here to present this topic, I have Tarun and Abhijit. Both represent Remedy development team and have background to smart reporting and analytics product. Also, BMC extended team is on WebEx to respond to your questions in Q&A panel while we present content for today's topic. Here is today's agenda. I'll kick off this session with a recap of where we started with smart reporting. Essentially, what was customer feedback for us to consider new reporting solution for Remedy? Also, how smart reporting has evolved since it was introduced with Remedy 9. Next, we'll have Tarun talk about differences in smart reporting and BMC analytics. As you may already know, both of these reporting solutions are built on top of separate underlying technologies, and Tarun will call out differences among those. And also, he'll talk about uh, some of the equivalent capabilities in smart reporting or any workaround when there is no feature parity. Next, Tarun will share some of the best practices to transition to smart reporting. Uh, BMC suggests this best practices based on interaction with our customers and partners who have done similar transitions successfully in the past. While Tarun will focus mostly on the differences in two reporting solution, Abhijit will talk about some unique capability in smart reporting that you should consider when rolling out smart reporting. Something like uh, statistical analysis for trend chart or adding infographics to your report to make those reports and dashboard visually appealing to users. And we'll close this session with reference material and Q&A. Let's begin with some background as why BMC offered yet another reporting solution when we, uh, when there are few options that existed for reporting of Remedy ITSM data. First and foremost was many conversations with customers and partners indicated that while there are these options for reporting, one, there were functional challenges with it. Uh, at one end of the spectrum, we had uh, web reporting, which was well embedded in mid-tier UI, but clearly it lacked comprehensive reporting capabilities for in-app reporting purposes. Or you know, the most challenging part of you know that uh, board-based web reporting was one lack of support for cross-process or cross-form reporting that typically required customization by way of join form. Also, data visualization or data analysis was limited. On the other hand, uh, Remedy had add-on capability called analytics, uh, which is business-based, uh, business object-based reporting platform, uh, which is priced and sold separately. Analytics was clearly more than in-app reporting solution and was a complete data warehousing technology. The challenge with Analytics was customers had to uh, license this separately and also needed additional infrastructure and you know specialized skill to manage and deploy analytics. This slide summarizes few key tenets of what market and our users were looking for from a reporting solution in Remedy. A clearly modern interface was one of the things that users were looking for when they were trying to uh, you know report data. Uh, this also helps organization with you know the modern interface where they get you know better productivity from users and also engaging um, users with you know the application that they offer other common requirement from user was to stop distinction between reports and dashboard uh, both of these formats are really used for represent data and users wanted a freedom to choose one or other rather than you know selecting uh, one or other so Self-service analytics was the other key requirement where existing reporting options were by and far mostly limited for users to run existing report from a library of report. While some customers wanted to continue with similar centralized approach, there were customers who wanted to empower their users to go ahead and create new reports on their own. A typical challenge with empowering users to do a self-service is how do you simplify metadata definition 
uh, that anyone who is not admin or developer can still comprehend uh, comprehend that remedy data structure and create meaningful report the third aspect that we uh, talked with users was visualization you know data visualization now this data visualization is more or less an extension of usability on the point one above but it is still worth calling out uh, in this you know reporting use cases because data visualization is the critical aspect of a report and dashboard uh, users are frequently exposed to you know the world of reporting outside of remedy and uh, they are looking for something beyond bar chart pie chart trend chart excel where new types of charting options are available like uh, geolocation map based charting or heat maps or bubble charts and so on and then uh, users desire to extend social collaboration aspect to reporting use cases where they would not uh, they would not only like to share data with others but also use reporting for explaining insight behind it or use reporting for analyzing data with broader team and while these were four key highlights of user needs from reporting many other aspects were assumed to be available Uh, such as ability to export report to different formats ability to share reports with others interactive reporting by the way of uh, drill down to details and so on and while users had a vision for how they want to how they want to use reporting uh, organizations had you know slightly different uh, perspective to you know newer reporting which is how do you uh, deploy this rapidly and you know get a value realization very quickly and uh, instead of you know making this you know multi year uh, multi 100000 you know roll out for uh, another reporting solution we launch uh, smart reporting with remedy 9 to address these and various other needs of reporting for remedy itsm uh, clearly we were kind of you know looking at addressing those four or five key things and the first one that we offered was a modern ux a uh, mobile ready interface with great visualizations in smart reporting also the line between reports and dashboard is gone with smart reporting where users can choose how they want to visualize data uh, self service was another big promise that smart reporting delivers with a simplified semantic layer that enables any users who has right set of permission to create a report or dashboard and there are more than one way to collaborate with other users in uh, reporting smart reporting by way of comments threaded discussion but possibly the most powerful way of uh, representing uh, data or you know ability to communicate data insight is uh, combining this interactive reports with a, a text in you know, a descriptive text in uh, smart reporting storyboard capability also smart reporting is bundled with remedy and very clearly it helps organization to deploy and administrator smart reporting uh, being part of remedy deployment as well uh, smart reporting the way it is bundled uh, deployed helps organization to start seeing out of the box report and dashboard bringing in data from remedy on day 1 uh, that kind of helps organization with rapid value realization goal from smart reporting also uh, possibly all of you are aware that smart reporting is included as part of remedy itsm licensing so it helps further with value realization goal where you don't need to go through approvals for uh, additional license procurement etc and i'm sure smart reporting is not a new topic for most of you and hence i'll not be doing any live demo of these capabilities today but in case you want to learn more about smart reporting we'll share some resources towards end of this webinar for you to be able to quickly ramp up with smart reporting knowledge having talked about the purpose of smart reporting i want to make sure that you understand uh, how smart reporting is different than its predecessor or uh, simply put what smart reporting is not all about clearly header of this uh, slide uh, talks about uh, you know what smart reporting is it's a purpose built application and it's a in app reporting solution smart reporting is designed to be a reporting solution for remedy itsm needs Uh, users of remedy itsm will be able to report data in the remedy using this self service uh, mechanism available in smart reporting with multiple visualization options however uh, we don't expect 
you to use smart reporting outside of Remedy ITSM. Uh, essentially, smart reporting is not any data warehousing technology or a generic reporting platform where you can bring in data from other sources like finance, operation, and HR and use it for enterprise reporting. <clears throat> in fact, uh, technically speaking, smart reporting cannot be connected to any other data sources than Remedy. Uh, this is also true for cross BMC solution reporting. So if you talk about existing analytic solution that entitles you to connect to a few other BMC data sources outside of Remedy to have a BSM, uh, business service management or you know DM uh, reporting. However, when we talk about smart reporting, it being in-app reporting for ITSM, it only is able to report data for Remedy ITSM data. If you have to compare smart reporting with its predecessor in terms of what data it can report, uh, closest solution is Remedy Web Reporting. Uh, similar to web reporting, smart reporting can also report on any data that exists in the Remedy form. If you want to report on some external data, uh, the first thing that you need to make sure is you get that data in Remedy forms and then possibly you can extend uh, semantic layer and start using uh, smart reporting to create uh, reports on those external data in the context of Remedy ITSM data. Hopefully this kind of clears any uh, ambiguity around what to expect when you roll out smart reporting. There are many ways to define what has changed in smart reporting in the last uh, many releases. Uh, but if I have to summarize what have been our focus areas, these are the four focus areas for us to improve smart reporting. First is UX, uh, you know, all anything to do with the user experience, usability, uh, querying. This is where additional query capabilities are being added, uh, analytical power to analyze your data, and then content. You know, this is where persona-driven content is being uh, designed in smart reporting. UX, as we kind of you know started uh, with you know the vision for reporting, this was one of the uh, key principle uh, for us to you know have, design this reporting solution. Uh, all of the UX principle, you know, be it digital workplace or smart IT, are designed around interaction, which are mobile ready, and this is no exception for smart reporting. And smart reporting, in fact, offers you mobile app on Play Store and App Store for getting all of your smart reporting content on mobile devices. In when you go into smart reporting mobile app, you can easily swipe to browse dashboard reports. You can filter with the tap of a finger and pinch and zoom when you're trying to look data for more details. The difference here in uh, smart reporting is um, Content creation is very simple in a mobile app for, uh, for smart reporting. As soon as you create a report or dashboard, it is by default enabled for your mobile device access. You don't have to do any further development or there are no extra steps needed for getting all of this reporting content on mobile reporting app. Uh, there have been multiple uh, UX enhancement of, to smart reporting, but one worth calling out is you know how you interact with a long-running report. So as a user, uh, you might uh, you know start getting into a report, and you know that report might take uh, longer for load, and that's where kind of you, know, you start wondering how do you interact with it? Should you wait? Should you you know come back to this uh, report later? In smart reporting, there is a graceful way to handle it. So when a report is taking longer to load, system will actually prompt user with few options. So default is wait so that you know user can wait for a few more seconds and you know, the data will be available. Uh, the other option is user can email so that you know uh, you can leave that page, but system will send you an email report once uh, processing is complete. Or you can put that report in your smart reporting timeline. Or the last option is you cancel and you move to other report. So again, a small but pretty useful change that leaves user with a positive outlook about application for otherwise not a great situation. We have further simplified the content creation canvas. So 
uh, smart reporting includes you know this canvas and the new canvas allows for free form dashboard or report to be created with a combination of charts graphics and text uh, this enables dashboard designers to have more flexibility to create infographic style visualization than traditional uh, dashboards and then uh, in the recent release of remedy 1805 we have uh, added an option to directly launch smart reporting application whereas in the previous releases there was a navigation that required you to authenticate uh, first in the remedy mid tier or smart it uh, uh, interface before you could launch a smart reporting application from you know either smart it or mid tier with 1805 announcement we have offered an option to directly navigate to smart reporting url and launch smart reporting application next focus area for us is enhance uh, query capabilities as you may know working with smart reporting by now that smart reporting uses ar jdbc mechanism to extract data from remedy there are few advantages with this approach uh, over you know using custom sql or freehand sql where permission model in remedy is automatically enforced uh, by the way of using ar jdbc layer also localized information is available for reporting we have been adding capabilities to this ar jdbc to enable users to create advanced report in smart reporting uh, we added union clause in ar jdbc and i can better explain this uh, union support with an example so for example in cmdb we have cmdb cei and relationship uh, in the back end these are two different forms now when when you're uh, when you will use union feature you can actually uh, create one single report that brings data from both of these underlying forms or table similar way you can use this union clause to uh, get reporting uh, uh, create report which also include your uh, existing data in the production table along with your archive data uh, in the archive tables another most commonly requested features for uh, for smart reporting users was uh, creating advanced report uh, with sub query or append query uh, essentially sub query is used to return data that will be used in the main query as uh, condition to further restrict uh, data to be retrieved so for example uh, if there is a report with business service that shows incident changes outage data for selected service essentially this data is coming from different forms uh, remedy forms like you know the incident problem outage and so on so how this report is possible in smart reporting is passing business service uh, selected business service as a main query condition to incident change and outage in smart reporting and then there was another uh, change in the date formatting so what if if you want a calculated field to return just a uh, day of the month or uh, you know the month of the uh, year quarter of the year etc rather than returning the full date from a field now you have a new function available that allows you to display just the day of quarter in your report and there are many uh, such capabilities that we added in here jdbc layer analytics uh, this is you know the core analytical capability uh, that we largely leverage from our oem reporting platform one of the key announcement in this area was introduction of forecasting and trend analysis and why this is relevant is uh, typically as organizations rise up maturity levels of service management practices just looking at historical trend data is not sufficient and you would like to now forecast future and be prepared for it and simple example i can take here is forecasting of incident submission trend so that for future you can plan your service desk staff augmentation to handle this work lo- workload which is depicted in you know this uh, forecast uh, for incident trend to support this and you know many other use cases for predictive analytics smart reporting now includes support for statistical function like forecasting trend analysis average set analysis and you know other few statistical functions and then the last focus area the fourth focus area here is uh, content which is persona driven uh, you know which is meant for specific personas we have been 
very selective in adding content, uh, out of the box content, dashboards and KPM metric. Again, as I said, the focus is very similar to uh, UX where, uh, you know, the research indicate that, you know, for these persona, this is the most relevant content and that's what we will add to smart reporting as out of the box content. So for example, you will see service dashboard, which is for service owner persona who's interested in tracking all statistics about uh, the services that he or she owns. Similar way, uh, we have new KPIs for problem requests and availability management. We added uh, release management report and dashboard when we added support for release manager persona. And this content will help release manager to effectively manage all of his activities. Similarly, we added uh, reporting on CMDB hierarchical data. Uh, this is kind of you know unique in a way that CMDB data is all hierarchical or topological, but when you're we want to report something out of it, it needs to be kind of, you know, flattened out. So we have given some sample views and uh, report that helps you to get CMDB data in the report. Further, if you want to analyze your multi-site data in the remedy for location intelligence, you can do that with out of the box geopacks, which provide you with global and country map with ability to layer your metrics on top of geomaps. Very clearly, smart reporting has evolved since it was introduced with Remedy 9. We have added new features, new content over last couple of releases. Purpose of this section was to make sure that you have an understanding of what smart reporting is, how it has evolved, and what you can expect from this. As I said before, smart reporting is a NAP reporting solution for Remedy ITSA. Also recently, with site operations management 11.3 version, uh, they have used same OEM technology that powers Remedy Smart Reporting for uh, reporting you know, the true site operations management data. But just to be clear that you know both of these smart reporting you know uh, technology and name the same, these are separate instances and you know each one will work to get data for you know those particular solutions. So Remedy uh, Smart Reporting will give you data for Remedy ITSM data, whereas TrueSight Smart Reporting will get you data for TrueSight uh, specifically. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Tarun and he will walk us through some of the differences in technology between Smart Reporting and BMC Analytics and how do you transition from analytics to Smart Reporting. Over to you, Tarun. Thank you, Rahul. I'm going to talk, talk about Smart Reporting and BMC Analytics transition and few best practices for the transition. So when we started Smart Reporting from Remedy 9.0, since then we have came a long way by trying to include various analytics features on top of additional Smart Reporting capabilities. Analytics which uses SAP Business Objects as the inline tool is an enterprise solution, whereas Smart Reporting is a light web-based application reporting tool. In this section, we are going to analyze the key differences and changes in Smart Reporting and Analytics. We will also talk about the alternate solutions which Smart Reporting provides in terms of fulfilling the existing analytics requirements. There will be some direct solutions which can be used as it is and some solutions for which there will be need of defining the business logic once again. There are three parts of transition which are we going to look at presentation layer, semantic or business layer and few other functional differences. In presentation layer or the report design and display page there are notable changes in terms of tabular and graphical representation and several report components. In analytics, we have SAP WebI as the reporting console and in smart reporting, we got a direct reporting console to design the reports. Report developers who have been using analytics can relate to smart reporting very easily. In semantic layer or the business layer, which is the intermediate layer which connects reports to data. In terms of analytics or SAP business objects, we call it universe. 
in smart reporting we call them views so there is a difference in the way a universe is created in sap business objects and a view in smart reporting we can still make calculated fields similar to what we do in analytics or business objects now let's look at what changed in the presentation layer so we have highlighted various features in the slide which have changed in the presentation layer of the two different tools which is analytics and smart reporting let's look at them one by one the first one is multiple tabular sections and single report in sap business objects multiple tables can be included as a part of one reporting canvas in smart reporting speaking in terms of report user perspective look and feel still remains the same from a developer point of view there is a change in the process of designing the layout so instead of creating all the tables in a single report canvas you can create multiple reports based on the same view and then using code display feature of smart reporting they can be presented together in a single canvas added advantage here is that those tables can be reused in other similar reports or can be used as individual reports this also gives you an opportunity to leverage this functionality in storyboards where you may want to include only parts of certain reports similar to multiple tabular sections there is a concept of having different tabs in a report in smart reporting you can accomplish this functionality by creating different reports and then using tabbed code display feature you can make them available to the end user as a tabbed report again no difference when an end business user sees his report changes are for the report developer in the way of designing the report the next item here is user prompt display you can display user user prompt in smart reporting just the way in analytics there are various options to configure the filters according to your preferred display as shown in the slide now let's look at few of the other features which are not directly available in smart reporting let's talk about the input controls so there are no input controls in smart reporting as we have in analytics however you can click on the column drop down option and perform some operations like aggregation sorting grouping and few other advanced functions use of free and sql is not supported as it involves certain complexities so in order to provide a better support around it we have added all ar jdbc functions and you can use those speaking in terms of context operators there is no concept of context operators in smart reporting as the whole idea of bringing smart reporting is to enable a non bi reporting person with knowledge of remedy and help him to create his own business reports developing reports in analytics requires certain level of trainings and expertise regarding the last point dimension value display in a single cell in sap business objects we can display a distinct value from all the values for a particular dimension in a single cell the same is not possible in smart reporting for example you can have a dimension for region and under region you can have five rows once you drag that region object or region dimension in your report you can have a distinct row which can be displayed as a single row in a single column or in a single cell however the same is not possible in smart reporting in smart reporting in place of dimension you can definitely display a major object in a single cell 
Now let's talk about the differences in the semantic or the business layer. Biggest advantage is that you don't have to know the DB table names of your remedy forms. This is best suited for a new remedy user creating a custom form and who wants to perform a reporting operations using a reporting tool. In analytics, you would either end up creating a new universe which will involve knowledge of database connections and information regarding the t-table for that particular custom form or you will have to insert the new t-table of the newly created form and add to the current universe and then define joins, classes and other objects. In smart reporting, you just need to know the name of the custom form you have created and it will be listed under table name while you are creating the smart reporting view. You can create various calculated fields using direct reporting functions as well as ARJDBC functions. Now let's talk about the few of the points which I have listed in the slide. The first one being T tables or S tables or DB views which cannot be used and how can they be accomplished in smart reporting. So there is a different way in which you can create reports on the T tables or S tables or even DB views. You can create DB view on top of a T or S table and then create a view form using database view. Now let's talk about the isolated tables. In analytics, you can have isolated tables in the universe and use its objects for reporting. In smart reporting, there is a different way of incorporating this. You can define a random join of the table with the master table or you may create a new view specific for that table and then use it in new or existing report by using subquery option. Now let's look at few other points as mentioned in the slide. Let's talk about read restrictions. In smart reporting, there is no read restriction on specific fields. You could either enable a field to be visible to all or not visible at all. Regarding leveraging underlying DB functions, we cannot directly use database functions but for complex reporting requirements, we can create database view and leverage those functions and then on top of that, we can create a remedy form and then use it in smart reporting. Smart reporting views are not free from join definition. You can have inner join and outer join defined at view level. You can also define left outer joins by using subquery options in the report. So basically, maybe you cannot have a right outer join kind of a situation. For the last point, as in analytics universe where hierarchies can be defined to a certain level, in smart reporting, this is not feasible. You may still use various drill features embedded in reporting console and use them as your drill down features for smart reporting. Now let's talk about few other functional differences. Let's talk about the data caching mechanism. Smart reporting is a web based reporting tool and has a different caching mechanism than SAP business objects. As in SAP data is stored in a multi-dimensional cubes which allows users to perform various slice and dice and pivot kind of operations. In smart reporting, it is a single dimension structure. We can have aggregation, summation kind of operations which are part of our advanced functions. For concurrent sessions, in a, for a single user, so when a single user logs into smart reporting, it utilizes its session. Now that user will not be able to log in into another concurrent sessions. So concurrent session for single user is not supported in smart reporting. For historical schedules and broadcast instances, smart reporting does not hold on to historical schedules and broadcast instances. You can define refresh intervals at the report level 
and those instances will be available. Smart reporting does not have any of its own security features. In place, it utilizes security defined at the remedy. So, there is no individual user level restrictions which can be applied. However, there are some restrictions which can be applied at a group level. At user level, we can define edit create kind of permissions. For user role and security management, you have added functionality to create custom roles in smart reporting. So you can define few roles and give them permissions to perform certain kind of operations only. Regarding the last point, which is about AR-based authentication, in smart reporting, only the users which are present in Remedy will be authenticated. No other external users can use smart reporting for any other reporting needs. However, Remedy itself can use RSSO and other mechanism to authenticate. Now let's talk about few of the best practice for transition to smart reporting, which we have found out by interacting with our various business users who have successfully transitioned to smart reporting. Many customers have developed their own specialized reports in analytics reporting solution based on SAP business object set. Now prerequisite for this transition would be that users should have a basic understanding of analytics and smart reporting and should be aware of how data is stored in ITSM database. We can start by identifying top critical reports out of all your reports and then perform the replication in smart reporting. In case you have your high level design documents and technical design documents for your custom reports in analytics, that will be a good startup point. Else you may do a similar as analysis with this also. You can choose the top down approach to break down the reports into subcategories. First of all, pick the first report which you would like to replicate. Break down the analytics reports in terms of visualization, direct remedy form objects and calculated objects. By visualization, it is what kind of structures are used like horizontal tables, vertical tables, cross tabs, charts or any other. After that, check the calculated fields and find out the base remedy form object on top of which calculation is derived. After that, identify what all other remedy form objects are present in the report. By this exercise, you will have the object's names and their table names which you could refer to find out actual remedy form name. Then you can check how these tables were connected in the analytics universe. In case you are using direct SQL based reports, you can identify the needed joins from the report query. After this, you can start building your reports in smart reporting. First of all, do check if any of the existing out of the box smart reporting views holds the needed information. For example, if you have created any HPD help desk report, then an incident view may hold most of the objects you need to develop your report. If not, then start by creating the view and defining the identified joins, post which you can publish the view similar to exporting universe in analytics and then start designing the report. The other best practice for transition would be to apply filters. As in analytics, where we used to have some report filters and some filters at universe level, we can have filters on the similar trend in smart reporting as well. It is advisable to run your large reports with some filters as it would result in faster data retrieval. 
as in analytics we used to have filters at query level, we can do that in smart reporting as shown in the slide. As a best practice, add some default values to filters like you may use date ranges as like last 15 days or last 30 days to begin with. Now let's talk about the schedules or broadcasts. Similar to analytics, we can have schedule the reports in smart reporting as well. Here we name them as broadcasts. Once you have set up the broadcast, there are few things that you need to be aware of. You should avoid creating any broadcast with frequency of run cycle of less than 10 minutes. This may impact your overall smart reporting performance. In case you still need to have them, you can use options to maintain history of the current version only as shown in the slide. For every event in smart reporting, its entries are stored in separate database which is a smart reporting database. We will talk more about the smart reporting database in our coming slides. Other than that, it is advisable that you keep historical backup to one month only. There is another option below these where you can set max age of versions to one month. It is not similar to analytics scheduled instances. This will only store the information related to those events. Now let's look at few of the smart reporting audit information. Smart reporting leverages Yellowfin as a baseline tool for reporting. As in analytics, there was audit database. We have smart reporting database with similar trends. You can have this audit information by importing admin reports in smart reporting. Let's look at some key tables which will help you to understand how smart reporting works. First is the event table. This table stores all the Yellowfin users data such as user logins, running the reports, imports, exports. This kind of data can be used for auditing. The second table here will be event archive table. This table stores all of the archived event data. So the data from event table flows into event archive table. After a specified period, you can define that specified period based on business need. By default, it is one month. You can make it less or more based on your needs. The next table we are going to talk about is document data table. This table stores a lot of report related data not just met, not metadata, but the actual data like cached reports, result sets, some cache filter results from older releases and CSV reports. The last table is report instance table. This table stores a record for each report each time it is run or edited. If you run the same report multiple times, you will get multiple rows for that report in this table. This is used for things like getting average report runtime and also use for using the remember filter value option. In case of editing a report, the draft copy of a separate record so you can roll back to the original activated version also can be used for KPI reporting. This was my set. Now for getting more value out of smart reporting, I'll pass on to the control to my colleague Abhijit. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks Tarun. Uh, so as Tarun already uh, spoke about some of the points where you may face some of the challenges during your migration phase. Now let's just uh, speak about uh, how you can get more value out of your smart reporting deployment. And let's take up, talk about some of the key features that smart reporting offers uh, out of the box. So a smart reporting solution comes with its own set of uh, unique uh, features and leveraging such features will definitely add some real value into reporting ecosystem. Uh, it's built up on top of latest charting libraries and it enables you to create a very stunning and intuitive visualizations. It's very lightweight and completely web based solution. 
it comes with very comparatively less hardware footprints. Uh, so now let's talk about some of the key features that will really add some value into your uh, reporting uh, environment. So when we uh, speak about uh, leveraging some s such features, one thing will definitely uh, you know help with in the journey is re-establishing or redefining your reporting requirements. So let's take an hypothetical example where uh, a couple of your reports or bunch of your reports can be implemented together in one single dashboard. And dashboard is one of the smart reporting key key feature that it offers. It has uh, its own interactive capability. Then some of the KPIs also help you to you know create a new report with all new angle. Uh, some of the uh, presentation layer features like infographics also help you with uh, the uh, leveraging such features at full extent. Uh, when we talk about uh, the operational reporting, uh, there are some capabilities available in smart reporting product which will take your reporting beyond your operational reporting and it will allow you to you know. Uh, extend the analytical scope. So one of the quick example I would like to call out is the real-time dashboards. So these dashboards are uh, set to refresh its reports at a specific amount, a specific time interval. Uh, then uh, in the trend line, uh, we have something called as predictive trend line or trend line analysis uh, tools, which will uh, help you to draw some of the benchmarking on your existing trends. And th there is a, another embedding option. It will allow you to you know, embed uh, the reports uh, to any of the third party portal. And again, uh, there are some other advanced analytical capabilities available, which will uh, he help you to create some of the complex reporting requirement. Uh, so quick example would be the what if analysis reports. And there are some statistical forecasting features are available. Then uh, KPI scorecard is also available, which will allow you to uh, monitor uh, health of the specific key performance indicators. Now let's uh, talk about some of the uh, key features in detail and how you can implement and how it will uh, add a value uh, to your reports. So first, let's talk about the live dashboards. So the live dashboards are nothing but uh, a, a normal dashboard, but uh, with the help of uh, report refresh frequency, uh, the reports inside the dashboard will refresh automatically at a specific time interval. So you can set a uh, report refresh frequency in dashboard setting. Uh, all the reports uh, that has report uh, re refresh frequency set, those will uh, get refreshed by itself and it will keep pulling uh, live data from your AR system. So in the BMC IT, we have already implemented this feature. And if you can see on this slide, the the report has been created. The report significant, uh, significantly tells you about the incident aging and it keep refreshing at every two minutes. So it will help you uh, help you with the prioritizing few things. Those need immediate attention and, and uh, it will allow you to you know, uh, monitor health of your overall uh, process. Then another example would be uh, the total service desk incident count and it is stacked based on priority. So these all reports are uh, embedded in a dashboard and the dashboard has been set to refresh itself or every two minutes. Moving on, let's talk about KPI scorecard. So KPI scorecard is one of the out of the box feature uh, smart reporting offers. As its name implies, it's a key performance indicator it's, and its scorecard. Uh, the the key thing about scorecard is it will allow you to um, you know, monitor or it, it will analyze your data as compared to whatever target you have set at the initially. And this display a scorecard like format and it, it also has a bullet chart integrated inside the table itself. It will help you to you know, analyze where you are uh, right now placed according to your targets. And this is also a uh, interactive nature. Uh, so those all all KPIs score, uh, KPIs are clickable. You can uh, actually go inside the report and see the further details. A statistical forecasting or trend analysis. So this is again uh, one of the added feature to in, into the existing trend lines. So trend lines are uh, widely used to you know uh, monitor the overall trend of your specific uh, ticket volume or any uh, KPI that you created. So uh, the trends are generally help you with uh, the 
overall inflow where the peak is coming and and uh, analyze such data points and with the help of some of the statistical calculation uh, we can actually help we can actually see beyond the specific period so let's take an example you are analyzing a six months of data in a trend chart and with the help of this standard statistical algorithms it will a plot a future trend uh, based on whatever uh, whatever results uh, coming out of that statistical uh, algorithms and uh, along with this this statistical forecasting uh, feature we also provide some useful functions like mean median it generally provides average value for a given data set it help you with the benchmarking a few stuff and some of the variance functions provides ability to split chart data set for a specific uh, qualification moving on uh, let's talk about what if analysis so what if analysis is nothing but analysis analysis style mostly used to help with the decision making process uh, the key thing about what if analysis calculation is it allow you to run reverse calculation by modifying calculation context at runtime and uh, and as smart reporting uh, supports this analysis style out of the box uh, using using a parameter component in smart reporting views uh, we can create uh, such kind of uh, what if analysis reports now uh, the visualization feature that i would like to mention here is the infographics it, it's one of the uh, great unique feature available in smart reporting so it's it's like a new way of uh, you know analyzing uh, your reporting data it is available under special purpose charting uh, so overall how it works is it, it generally use or uh, end user can use any kind of any kind of image uh, to you know uh, display uh, report data so it we have two two kind of uh, infographics available uh, proportional one and comparative one so the proportional one basically modifies a segment of an image where the comparative one will modify the size of an image it can be placed on flexible report canvas to create a pixel perfect visualization layouts and along with this infographics images you can also add some static static uh, uh, text or uh, other images or icons and shapes to you know more uh, make it more intuitive in nature now let's talk about the embedding part so embedding one of the key uh, or 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 we can say a unique feature available in smart reporting so essentially what it means is you can create a report in your smart reporting uh, instance and you can embed that specific report any in any uh, third party portal or any html page so it's it's very easy to embed there is not really any technical details or uh, technical expertise are required to embed these reports uh with the one single line of javascript snippet uh, you can basically embed any report in your uh, in in any kind of third party portal and again uh, this embedding is not just uh, like a screenshot uh, integrated in your html page it's a fully interactive experience it mostly support all all interactive capabilities like drill down drill throughs uh, and uh, filter application and everything uh, also it has ability to export the report into multiple formats so again this is one of the uh, useful feature that comes comes in handy with smart reporting deployment now let's talk about something of, uh, about admin insights so a uh, smart reporting has complete audit facility for tracking uh, user activity uh, all all the all the audit information sits uh, inside the reporting repository database and uh, we have some of out of the box reports and dashboards available uh, to analyze or to monitor uh, such uss data as an administrator you will be able to run report against a smart reporting database and it will help you to determine the uss statistics and track access to a specific uh, specific area of your smart reporting instance you can generally generally useful reports in in this our audit inside uh, audit uh, content package uh, mostly used or least used report in your reporting it will help you with the clean up and house house cleaning activity uh, then uh, how many users are accessing smart reporting it will help you with the uh, uh, environment uh, modification like you can scale up or scale down the environment uh, you can it, it can also be used to analyze broadcast and scheduling instances so this is again uh, uh the useful uh, set of reports for administrative staff uh, to keep system health uh, 
in place. Then a geographical analysis. So it's again uh, one of the unique feature. Uh, if you have a geographical data points in your AR system, then with the help of this geo packs and uh, geographical analysis, you can create the stunning visualization on the map. So essentially, values plots on a map with the corresponding color and size represents a, a metric value per specific dimension. There are two options available to leverage this feature. Uh, one is a Google Maps, but Google Maps repo requires a, a special subscription from, uh, from the Google services. And another option we have is a GeoPack. So we have set of uh, GeoPacks available for us, uh, for selected countries. Uh, those are available on EPD. You can just download this and integrate in your uh, smart reporting deployment. And you can start analyzing your geographical data points in, in the map itself. So with this, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hand over to Rahul for uh, concluding the session. Over to you, Rahul. Hey, uh, thanks, for Vijay. So uh, Vishay does, you know, how smart reporting has evolved around, you know, this four focus areas, you know, in the beginning section, uh, you know, the user experience, you know, the query capabilities, uh, you know, via ER JDBC layer, and the legal capabilities content. <clears throat> Uh, when we talk about future, we will continue to focus on smart reporting with additional in-app reporting use cases. So on the customer requests with smart reporting talks about making uh, smart reporting even further native to ITSM UI so that they can see smart reporting uh, content, you know, the reports and dashboard in ITSM console without need to launch uh, smart reporting uh, separately. Also, we expect to upgrade our OEM version that gives access to uh, another set of uh, new analytical capabilities. So, uh, something like you know, moving away from the manual data discovery, where end users have to sift through data and look for uh, you know data insight, uh, to a next phase of analytics where smart reporting will have some algorithms to discover outliers and data insight. So for the most part of uh, today's uh, webinar, we talked about analytics and in you know, a comparison with uh, smart reporting. But we also have you know some of these other uh, reporting technologies that we support or you know, we supported in the past. Uh, one of them is dashboard, a dashboard for DSM. Uh, this was a offering along with uh, analytics, and this was a product which was focused on executive dashboard. Uh, this product has already reached end of life in March uh, this year, and this product is obsolete. Uh, the the good thing is, uh, dashboard. You know, all the capabilities in dashboard uh, product are easily available in smart reporting. So there's a good chance that all the content that you had, uh, you can still recreate it in smart reporting without any limitation. Uh, the only difference here is a dashboard also allows you to go beyond uh, the ready ITSM data. That's the only part which is not going to be available in smart reporting, but otherwise from feature parity, uh, all the capabilities of the previous dashboard product are very well available in the new smart reporting dashboard. Uh, web reporting, uh, this is something that uh, many of you might have seen used, uh, which is a board-based reporting. We continue to support it, but uh, very clearly, one, we are not investing any further in this area, as you might have seen in past a few, uh, in a few releases. Uh, uh, again, you know, if you try to think about, you know, if you want to move away from you know, the web reporting to smart reporting, uh, there is good set of uh, function feature capabilities available. One area where uh, web reporting uh, still uh, gets uh, some the only point is it's pretty uh, embedded in you know the mid-tier UI, uh, which you know smart reporting is you know uh, available as a separate application, separate you know browser tab. So that's one difference uh, in terms of you know the uh, how you access those uh, content, but in terms of uh, you know ability to create those kind of reports, you know, ability to have you know uh, charts and you know, select data, all of those things are very well aware in smart uh, smart reporting. Uh, Crystal report, uh, we kind of you know, stopped shipping Crystal report uh, as you know, the reporting technology a while back. 
but uh, there are customers who kind of you know purchase licenses uh, from Crystal and there's the integration that was working uh, till some of the recent releases. But with Crystal, uh, if I remember, you know, the 2016 version, they made some non-backward compatible changes, and essentially uh, from uh, you know the Crystal sort of 2013 uh, worked with Remedy, but the recent uh, version of Crystal Server uh, does not work with Remedy anymore. Uh, if you are trying to you know transition away from Crystal to smart reporting. Uh, you can do a lot of those data analysis part, but where Crystal was kind of you know, unique in its uh, value proposition was pixel perfect reporting, right? So when you have, if you have seen any of those Crystal reports, um, typically you could you know export it to uh, you know Word format or Excel format, and you know, with a lot of uh, uh, perfect kind of you know the export format, you could add you know the table layout, you could add you know the headers, footer, images, and all of that. Uh, which may not be, uh, you know, to the same extent available in smart reporting. You know, you can do all of these. You can export to, you know, different uh, office format, but it may not be a pixel perfect reporting when it comes to smart reporting. And then uh, the other part of uh, uh, reporting is, you know, if you are using anything beyond this, you know, any kind of other reporting option to extract data from a remedy. Those will continue to be available. Uh, by introduction of smart reporting, we haven't uh, deprecated any of our standard in, uh, interfaces. So uh, any existing mechanism that you are using will uh, continue to be available for working with those other technologies. With that, uh, I'll move to reference section where uh, I'm going to share some of the resources for you to ramp up with uh, smart reporting knowledge. Uh, we have done two webinars in the past uh, on the smart reporting. Uh, the one was last year, last August, uh, about you know what changed in smart reporting. It also talks about some of the deployment best practices. Uh, there was a, a pretty uh, uh, old webinar from 2015, but it's still relevant in terms of some of those, you know, the, uh, the basic capabilities in smart reporting, why smart reporting was <clears throat> Added, you know how it works, you know how dashboard report works, etc. Uh, one of the best way uh, for you to, uh, when you are you know, trying to learn something about smart reporting, how to perform a particular <coughs> activity in smart reporting, you could refer to the uh, YouTube videos. Uh, these are 80 plus uh, videos, uh, five minutes of the video method, which picks up a topic, uh, how to do it, and then they talk about yeah, how to achieve it in the smart reporting. So uh, these will come handy when you're uh, kind of you know, trying to achieve a specific uh, function or feature in smart reporting. And then we have a, a group set up in BMC community, uh, get started with smart reporting. This uh, group essentially uh, kind of going to focus on smart reporting because uh, smart reporting was relatively new uh, and you know, some of the conversations could easily get lost in you know, the AR community or IDSM community where there are you know, tons of other topics get discussed. We kind of carved out a, a niche space and new group uh, just with focus with smart reporting. So if you have any further uh, questions on you know, today's topic or you know, any other Smart reporting question. Uh, this is one uh, another resource for you to you know uh, interact with other uh, community members, including you know some uh, the BMC teams uh, on you know the call today, and they uh, will be responding to some of your questions from the community. So with that, I think uh, I'll uh, give back to Greg, and you know uh, Greg, uh, maybe we can get started with the Q and A session. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Rahul. And uh, Evan, if you're able to uh, provide instructions uh, to our attendees of how they can signal us for questions. Evan, are you there? I am, thank you. If you wish to ask a question at this time, please signal by pressing star one on your telephone keypad. Please ensure your mute function is switched off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. A voice prompt on the phone line will indicate when your line is open. Once again, please press star one to ask a question. We will now pause briefly for every to give everyone an opportunity to signal for a question. While we wait for questions, Rahul, I have a few uh, that came in uh, via the Q and A. 
Uh, first one is, uh, is smart reporting a replacement for BMC dashboards? Yeah, so I did, you know, partially answer it. Uh, if anyone is, you know, uh, trying to make a comparison between uh, existing dashboard for BSN product and uh, dashboard capability in smart reporting, uh, there is all features in the previous product are available in a smart reporting dashboard. Uh, the only uh, catch there is the previous BSN for dashboard product also allowed you to connect to other data sources, which is not the case with the smart reporting. But otherwise, in terms of ability to create, you know, different kind of dashboard, uh, you know, all kind of different visualization, all of that, and you know, far more data capabilities are available in smart reporting. Thank you, Evan. Do we have any questions uh, on the line? Yes, sir. We have Evan? one question. Yes, we have one question. We now have two questions. Your line is open. A voice from the stage. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Um, yes, I have a question. Um, I was trying to clarify in the question and answer, but when we set up our environment, um, we were, um, I guess, having trouble. So we onboarded um, customer, an or customer organization, we'll call it A, and imported all of the users, but then we couldn't get the content to import. So we created a um, customer B, which basically was the same same customer base because we're not multi-tendency and imported the content. Now we've been running for a, about a month, so data has been reported, but we really don't want to have both companies because I think it's causing a user sync issue. So we wanted the offboard customer B, but we're worried about losing all of the existing reporting data that's been created. Is there a way to, to rectify that? Uh, yeah, so uh, so when you offboard a customer, so the functionality will de uh, will basically remove every single reference for that specific customer, including reports and dashboard. In that case, let's say uh, the customer uh, the in the customer B, uh, the user has created some of the custom reports that you wish to retain. Uh, then you can export those reports in the, into XML file and then offboard the customer. And then you can just again re-import those uh, reports in uh, the uh, current current client organization which you are going to use for them. Okay, thank you. Our next question. Evan, our next question. Yeah. And, uh... Hi, uh, this is Shreyas here. So uh, I had a question regarding uh, digital workplace-based reporting capability. So since the uh, digital workplace also have is based on a AS system. Uh, so, why is there any plan to allow reporting for a digital workplace based trip, uh, forms and uh, views via the smart reporting? Right. So, uh, as probably you have seen, you know, some of the responses here. Uh, current smart reporting licensing is all about ITSM users, and which uh, the way it is enforced in the system is. Any user who has a, a, a fixed or floating license entitlement is one you know you can access smart reporting. So you're right that you know current DWP users don't have access to smart reporting. Uh, I don't have a specific uh, input from you know the DWP team as you know there are sort of timelines for enabling uh, reporting, but in some of the previous conversations with uh, you know other customers. We did indicate that you know that's one of the roadmap items, but I'm not having any specific details of you know when that will be available. Okay, so is this one of those items you uh, you or someone else mentioned in the early in the meeting that uh, uh, will will DWP have its own smart reporting instance going into the future sometime down the line? Yeah, so uh, I don't think we have, you know, laid down as whether it will be smart reporting as a technology which will power, you know, the current uh, remedy at SM as well as uh, DWP, but uh, that would be, you know, something that we're still evaluating. Evan, were there any more questions queued up? We have two more questions queued up. Okay. Our next, next question, caller. Our next question is... Open, your line is open, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, just to tag along with the previous caller's question, 
uh, about uh, you know the smart IT and how it integrates with the uh, smart reporting. Uh, now, uh, so although you know the recommendation is to install them on uh, different uh, servers, uh, I was trying to you know uh, in a demo environment trying to see if I can install configure both uh, uh, digital workplace as well as smart IT on the same machine. Uh, looks like uh, there's some issues in terms of you know uh, you need different instances of Apache, different versions of Apache running. So. Uh, I guess, uh, do you have any online videos or documentation I could give you to, to play with it a little bit? So, uh, can you clarify, you know, which version of Smart IT or DWB you're trying? Uh, and the reason I ask that is uh, there are some changes we have done in recent version, and, you know, those recent versions are out in, you know, last year, one week, where we have separated Smart IT and uh, digital workplace products, uh, you know, from the installation uh, experience perspective. So, uh, you know, 1805 release of Smart IT and 1805 release of DWP are two separate installations. Uh, unlike, you know, the previous release, which was like, you know, the one installer, one installation process. So that's, uh, that's one of the key changes that we uh, did for, you know, these products. Uh, so maybe you know, that could be a challenge that you're facing when you're trying to uh, you know, install these products. Oh, thank you. Um, actually, what I did was I, I installed 9104 and then upgraded to uh, version 1805 uh, with Smart IT. All right. So when when you you know go to either uh, you know DWB 1805 or Smart IT 1805, essentially you need to have both of these products are the same version. Also, if there is you know, certain steps that you need to follow because this is the release when we are kind of you know, separating these uh, two products uh, from you know, any dependency but that, you know, the Mongo uh, DB removal was one of the uh, key initiatives for 1805 release. So that could be very well the reason that you, know, you are having some of this uh, trouble with uh, you know, making this product work together. Okay, thank you very much. We will now take our next question. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, yes, uh, I have a question regarding the uh, the incident report. Uh, for example, in the uh, in my report, I know or an incident that uh, when it's been assigned, when it's been put on hold, when it's been resumed. Now, on the report, I have many rows with the different dates. Now, my question is, is there a way that we can calculate, uh, like making an additional row and calculate that from beginning to the end and we subtract the pending period? Can you hear me? Uh, hey, uh, can you come again and try to describe that again? I'm sorry? Uh, can you describe that problem again? Yes, um, for the incident, we know that the day's been assigned, the day's been resolved, and we also know that when it was put on pending. Now, we want to um, find out what is the actual working time to resolve the, the, to resolve the incident by using the from start time to resolve time, and we subtract the pending period. Now, my question is, is it possible to do that in smart reporting? Because in smart reporting, I have three rows, three or four or five. How can we do the calculation from the rows that we have on the report? Uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> so the quick answer would be, uh, it can be done, but it's quite difficult to achieve uh, in a very, you know, um, uh, very, very uh, easily in smart reporting. So the reason is uh, we have the uh, reported date and we also have the resolved date, but the pending time you need to exclude from the entire time uh, that has been recorded in audit logs. And uh, audit logs contains excess amount of data and you need to extract the exact amount of data that you need to extract the data, right? So that is something, uh, you know, the audit log uh, data manipulation is something quite tricky and it, it is not fully supported at this point in smart reporting. So excluding pending time is something could be challenging at this point. Uh, 
Can you say that again? At this point, is it possible or is it not possible? Uh, it, it's not, I mean, to be honest, because uh, re reading or auditing log data is not something uh, uh, can be done in smart reporting at this point of time. Okay. But can you take note? Because it's, it's, it's quite useful information, though. Thank you. And uh, just wanted to uh, go over uh, self-help uh, ways for contacting BMC. Uh, there is uh, a, a YouTube channel that we have available um, called the BMC Remedy and Discovery YouTube channel, a knowledge base that you can uh, search. These are both available 24 Seven, and also our normal contact methods via web, phone, and email, as well as via our social media outlets. Uh, this webinar will be posted within a one week of today's uh, live uh, stream, and also all the Q&A that were asked will be posted along with all supporting information and links uh, at that same location. Wanted to thank you all for joining today, and thank you to our uh, presenters and panelists. That We'll conclude today's webinar.